there's a significant amount of research about the negative effect um, physical isolation has on health. You said earlier in the pandemic, social, isola social, social isolation, grief, and job losses are just some of the factors that can contribute to increase in deaths. I was just curious, when did you notice that the lockdown policies were creating this pandemic within the pandemic? Uh, I'm sorry, what, what was the question? Your, Whether on the lockdown, the social isolation, the grief, and, and this is your quote, social isolation, grief, and job loss are just some of the factors that could contribute to increase in deaths, end of quote. I just wonder, when did you notice these factors playing out while the pandemic was going on, the serious consequences of, of keeping people locked down? Yeah, I don't remember that quote. Where, where was that? I can from? get it through for where we um, got it from. You don't, you don't recall saying social isolation, grief, and job loss are just some of the factors that can contribute to increase in deaths? Um, I don't, but yeah. that doesn't. Okay, I'll I get mean, it for you, Commissioner. Wait, I did, over. did. Did you feel that way? But um, I think that social isolation for uh, elderly, particularly elderly, uh, can be very damaging. But I cannot establish a link between that and uh, actual death. Yes. Can Can you provide the what the the source what, of the quote? The, sure. the source and what context? Maybe a, a commissioner yeah, that you said that in. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, I think I, I hope that we would all agree that lockdowns and isolation isn't a good or healthy thing for anybody. I, I mean, I, I would hope that we'd get almost unanimous support in a room that that is not a good thing in general, locking people down and keeping them confined. You know, I guess not. Maybe. No, I, I, I think so. Through the chair. It's my understanding that the CDC has declared uh, epidemic of diseases of despair, that those very stressors and factors do link to deaths. We don't even have to sit here and agree. There is evidence on that. Uh, it was a transcript, continue. June 22nd, 2020, coronavirus briefing media. I don't, I want to stick just to the facts, and that's the facts that so we can send that to you, but you can um, um, look it up or we'll put, pass it. Um, I, guess, I guess, Commissioner, just a simple question. What, what do you think is more important, individual, individual freedom or, or the government action? Like, what do you have, what do you think holds the higher, say, you know, the government actions or individual freedoms? What, but I'm, so, I'm sorry, but are, are, we, are we in budget? This is, I mean, can we ask relevant questions with regards to, I mean, the commissioner's budget is quite lengthy and there's, her department encompasses a lot. I'm not sure what the individual freedoms well, or however we think have to do with the budget hearing. Well, Assemblyman McCain is sure as death and taxes and blamed the whole thing on President Trump. I don't know what that had to do with no, Commissioner I'm, I'm sorry. He'll you, probably you, throw in Chris Christie in a few minutes. But I, I thought this was an open mind is the, the economic impact that this COVID had and the drastic actions of this governor and the health department had a massive impact on the state, on, on the budget, on, on all levels. And that's Listen, what I'm trying to they, get at. Oh, it, it, if uh, you want me to comment on the frivolity of he almost lost his life because he didn't have a mask on when he was with our president. Yeah. Different story. I knew it would come up. See, just give him the hearing. You asked me. I, I mean, like, I, I made a point uh, off of what uh, the assemblywoman was stating as it related to a policy directly. Individual freedoms and masks, we can, you know, all not show up to the chambers again if we want to do that. So let's, let's, let's just continue, Assemblyman. Let me see where your questioning is. I, I, I'm just concerned as to where, where it's going at this point because, I, I, I mean, civil liberties and, and I, I don't know. Continue. Well, it was controlled by the health department that closed this down in the governor. I, I think they're very valid questions asking at what level we're going to, to tolerate this. And, you know, we tried showing the science here, but, you know, I know we can get, here's a New York Times yesterday saying areas that were masked fared no better than um, unmasked. This is the New York Times, a very conservative right-wing paper published this yesterday. We'll, we'll, throw, we'll do the science. I'm simply trying to say, do you think any regrets that the lockdowns were too harsh? Look, to me, it's not about vaccination. I want to be very clear. I'm triple vaccinated. I got, I got the COVID. Actually, another quote from you, I'm definitely going to get it. Where we, are all, we all are. New Jersey's top health official says she leads as she leads. This 99% survival rate, I'm saying, you think the draconian lockdowns, I'll go right to the point that the draconian lockdowns that you and Governor Murphy put us through were the, were the correct thing for almost two years. Show me, where's the science that they worked, that they made a difference? As Assemblyman Congress has saved lives. Saved lives. We led the world in deaths. 
We led the world in debts. That's saving lives, Assemblyman? True. Are you kidding me? 33,000 debts. That's so, winning. So number one, the questions go through the chair. Okay, sorry. Number two, I think that what, Commissioner, you could correct me if I'm wrong. I'm stating once again, I am not a doctor. I do not have a medical. But I think we were dealing with a disease that no one really knew what its effects were, how to really stop it, what we could do to help to postpone the spread. I mean, there's a lot of things that go on to it. So man, I'm giving you the okay. latitude of asking the questions. You ask the questions, the commissioner is right there. Good. Commissioner. Could you repeat the question? <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure I'm what question down. you so want you me to answer. The, lock, the two, the, the two year lockdowns, you think that they not, not allowing kids to, to go to school for two years, college kids, the masks, the whole kit caboodle. Do you think that was the right thing? Did that, I hate to use the pun, that trump freedom? Does freedom come first or does the government control and the power that it took from the people? Because I'll never, I'll never forgive the government for the, for the people in New Jersey. Or the, and every, they can boo, they can throw, they can do whatever they want. I'll never forget those days where the government said, don't ride in your car, don't leave the house. I mean, that, with a, a, a disease that had a 99% success rate of people lived and beat it, thank God, to allow a government entity to lock us down like that is, is unforgivable. But I want to see if you think it was worth it, those two years of locking down, would you do that again? Would you put the folks of New Jersey through what we went through the last two years. You know, I'm sitting here as the Commissioner of Health. The what? And I'm sitting here as the Commissioner of Health. Commissioner, if, if you would like to answer that, it is up to you. Uh, that is not really a, a, a question that we're going to relive what happened. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to get past COVID as best as we can. So, Commissioner, it is up to you if you want to answer that question, because to me, I don't think that that's a relevant question for today. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairwoman. Um, as I said, I'm sitting here as the Commissioner of Health, and our mission at the uh, Health Department is to help uh, New Jerseyans live long, healthy lives and reach their highest potential. And we'll make decisions based on the circumstances at the time that hopefully will promote that. And that's what I, that's and my I'm answer. Not to it and that's the only answer I have. Uh, I'm, try I'm not trying to relive, I'm trying to see what the public can expect because I can see it already. Oh, the numbers are rising. This center, are we going to go back into those type of lockdowns and lose freedom? I don't expect you to answer. It's more of a statement the chairwoman has given her position. Now, here's one that I really would like to, and everyone here keeps saying science, 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 science. Tell me the difference between why a correction officer or our heroes, the medical healthcare people, have to be vaccinated or they're going to lose their job compared to other state employees or teachers that can be tested. What, tell me what science shows that they're at a much, and this does affect the budget because people are gonna be losing their jobs, people are gonna be losing their paychecks if the governor follows through. What is the difference between a correction officer who isn't exactly guarding our kids and a teacher or a healthcare worker? Why are they held to different standards? If it's about fairness and about science, explain to me very the difference between those different occupations and why prisoners don't have to get vaccinated, <laughs> but the correction officers do, who have one of the toughest jobs in, in the country. Um, our, uh, one of our goals at the department uh, is to protect those who are most vulnerable. Uh, that's a non-judgmental goal. It doesn't make any difference whether you're in corrections, um, it, meaning incarcerated, uh, or if you're in school. Uh, to protect those that are most vulnerable, particularly by those that are caring for them, uh, upfront personal. Uh, we um, suggest that uh, pr protecting them through uh, vaccination uh, methods is, is a good thing to do. It's not suggested though. It's not suggested that correction officers and healthcare workers get it. And I, I guess, maybe I'm really getting tired, I guess prisoners are more vulnerable and important than our children. No, we no we we, we want the teachers correction officer to, be has to be vaccinated. The vaccinated teacher doesn't also. have to be. Yeah. I don't. It's not an issue of who's more important than not. Well, we have 9.3 million individuals uh, in New Jersey, and our our work of the department is to protect all of them to the degree we can, with the knowledge that we have at the time. So there's you can't tell me the difference between a correction officer, a teacher, and a healthcare worker. Why they're held to one standard, different standard than other employees. I gave my answer. I guess it just pulled out of thin air. Thanks.